We're doing it. We're red. We're red. We're filming. You're gonna choke on that cigarette, see? I wonder I can't kickstart my bike. Big burr on that damn thing. So we're working on a 65 transmission. That should be a pan head, I guess. Yep. Might be on a shovel head, who knows. So I don't know what's wrong with it, I don't remember. There must be something wrong with it, it's here. So, just clean things up until you see issues. I see there's a big hole there. That's the one issue. You see all the stuff on the side of it? Mm -hmm. It's a combination of silicone and paint. See silicone, that's one problem. See that crop right there? Mm -hmm. That's one problem. Crappy mechanics use silicone. <coughs> so as you're cleaning the gaskets and stuff up and whatever else you see off, and it gives you a good opportunity to look at things while you're working on it. Look for things like holes and cases and stripped out threads, previous repair work that was done adequately wrong. Yeah. Crappy ass silicone everywhere. So that means you gotta check every orifice everywhere because that crap is everywhere. Crap. That's why you see no silicone up here. Like it. And also, I'm using a gasket scraper, not a rotary disc sander that screws up your cases that yeah. everybody wants to use because it's easy. All the threads are there. Yep. It's not very flat. <coughs> it's a triangle file, no cutting on the sides. So wrap up against your dolphin. Not hurting anything. See how uneven that is? Nice. See all the high spots. Flat. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Works great. <laughs> so you use this side over here to support, make sure this side's flat. You push here and out there. cracks on the inside. There's a hole through there. There's a whole lot. Holes up here. So right in here is where you look for any kind of a crack or anything. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything. So that means I don't have to do anything with that. Nice. I, mean, I could weld it up if I wanted to, which would probably cause the case to warp down. <laughs> when JB welded, we just leave it. That's on it. Yeah, they did that too. Right off the bat, we see there's locking threads in that hole. Now, if you want to put your hand over here, you might bleed. Yeah. 
appears those threads are screwed too. There's still some in there after you go in there about two threads. Mm -hmm. The first one's ripped out. So you can either leave that one or put a longer stud in it. Or put the correct stud in I should say. This one was too long, so they cut it. Same on that one. So that means they didn't have the right stud. Mm -hmm. So I probably need to get a stud kit. See, that wasn't on my list of stuff I already grabbed out here. So. Mm -hmm. That stud's too long unless you get a bunch of electric stud crap on the bike. So I guess I'm going to have to get a hold of the guy and see if he's running electric start or pick only. That'll determine what stud you put in here. Hmm. There's another bad hole. See how the thread's all pulled up in the case? Mm -hmm. Nice spot. Case isn't very flat there either. purpose doll file and cut my so it's all pooched up right there. And this whole surface needs to be cut flat. Every hole is pulled up and over torquing. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that's not stock. Could be an issue. That's been helicoiled. These appear to be good. Doesn't have to be an accident. Looks like they've had a chain or two come Ouch. loose. Chain was trying to exit the case sideways. Yeah. If this has electric start primary, this doesn't look very flat from here to here. More issues. So we'll have to get a hold of customers, see what they're going to do for an inner primary. Looks like the half house tried to fix that, but they didn't do a good job. The only problem is you usually come off this side to fix this side, but this side screwed up and this side screwed up. That means you get problems. Yeah. crap in there is all about. Some kind of corrosion probably. Or it's been welded. It doesn't look welded. That's just the corrosion then. Yeah. Acid and crap. This bearing here looks good. Yep. Don't look too close. <laughs> See all the acid at you? Mm -hmm. Hear it? Those spots. It's pitting. So that's bad. So to fix it right, that needs to be replaced. More parts. Otherwise, in good shape. Yeah, we might have to get a hold of this customer and see about money. <laughs> the bill keeps going up the more I look at it. Alright. These 
parts here are bad. Okay. Chewed up dogs. Teeth don't look the best. This here is not supposed to be not flat. And I don't think the oil seal is working too good on that surface mm -hmm. there either. Shift dog appears to be a little wrong. No, I did notice that they put this in backwards also. Mm. These are marked high for a reason. Mm -hmm. That goes against high gear, not against third gear. See, when you're going against third gear, it drops in this way and it's pushing on the ramp. See how this is angled downhill? Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah. so it drops in and it tries to come right back up. <clears throat> if you had it in direct correctly, it drops in, it's got more of a shoulder to hit against. So when you put them in backwards, you have shifting issues. Mm -hmm. so, mm. That's why this is chewed up pretty good. <clears throat> like I said, this is really heavily worn on the side. It normally doesn't have any wear on it because <clears throat> they put it in backwards. My guess is they had this. They used one anyway. They they had it in correctly, and then the last time they put it in backwards, so now it's chewed on both sides pretty heavily. Second gear, uh, a lot of wear on it on the dogs, plus a lot of rust on the teeth. And. This isn't too awful bad, but it's definitely worn, so. So those all need to be replaced. This one here has got a lot of wear on the kicker. Over here you can feel the wear. And you can also see where it's spun the clutch basket, or clutch hub when the key let go, or they just didn't tighten the nut down or something. Mm. So they cheat up the main shaft on the taper where the clutch cup goes on, so that means it doesn't hold very good anymore. And then the counter shaft, we see all the rust peeling in there. Here, my thumb catches on it. Mm -hmm. Not good. More issues. Not super bad, but not new either. And then these, you can see how the this here wasn't too happy about being in backwards, so it kept trying to come out. <laughs> and the fork didn't want it to come out, so it's kind of causing little wear issues in there. So pretty heavily worn. See, this side's nice here. Yeah. Plus, I think they hit all all the way to one side too, as I recall. This one here is not worn too awful bad. Could be reused, but it's got a lot of wear on the tip. So might as well put a new one in there. These are relatively cheap, the forks. So. So we'll fix those. That's my dad box. Boiling already. Well, the good box is over here. <clears throat> now that's relative speaking. So it still has rust issues, but at least the barren area looks good. See, it's not all pitted on the inside. It's not perfect, but it's usable. This here, though, has a big chunk missing out of it. Yeah. yeah. It feels pretty rough. So that'll be a little bit of clutch chatter when you pull your clutch in. Mm -hmm. Can you hear the chunk, 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 chunk as I'm going around? Mm -hmm. So that should be over here in the bad pile. So you can see how the dogs in this one are good. This is low gear. Teeth here, got rust in them, but not too awful bad, but you know, definitely not new. Mm -hmm. So, it's usable, it'll make a little bit of noise in the gears, but how often are you really in low gear? Come on. Yeah. Kicker gear looks alright, probably relatively new. Bushing's probably worn quite a bit though, but we haven't tried that to see how bad it is yet, so we might be working on that too. So, there's your ratchet dog for the kicker. Gauges in that. Doesn't look too bad. There's your other one, two gear. Once again, you got a lot of rust on the teeth. Low gear, especially. So, second gear is uh, pretty good too, but not real bad. But once again, it'll it'll work. It's not perfect, but it'll work. So this is our high gear. Got one pin in it right there, but 
Not too awful bad. A couple more over here starting. Same, same rust on the gears, so we'll see what the customer really wants to do on this stuff. I think he just wants to do a so-so job, but we'll see. At some point, you got to make some decisions on what you're going to do. Now, this here is shifting issues, or kicking issues, because the aftermarket gears are made real crappy. Mm -hmm. No heat treat. And these over here are relatively sharp. Mm -hmm. I dig them. And they cut right into the damn mechanism. So this one here goes like this on the bike. So this edge here is the one that does all the digging. See the marks in there? Mm -hmm. See, that's like a damn knife in there, cutting bit. Comes in there and eats the hell out of this gear. And if it stops way up here and the kicker don't come up all the way mm -hmm. until it pops in. See, it had a lot of water in it over the years. The relatively new part was rusty. So, you got a couple options. You're not going to find an original one, so that's out. So, that means you keep putting new gears in here because these things are always bad. And you go in here and grind all these teeth here, put radiuses on these so you get rid of all these sharp edges. And so it don't dig in. It doesn't dig in as bad. And then your other option, you go in here and put hard face in here and then grind the hard face in the way. But that's pretty hard to do because you got the, uh, the teeth are right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a new gear in here and then I'm going here, I'm going to grind these out with a little disc sander, mm -hmm. put some radiuses on these edges, try to get rid of some of these sharp edges. Let's see how long that'll live. Mm -hmm. Hopefully better than what this one is. So more parts to work on and more bad parts. And the other thing is this radius over here gets flat. This one still looks good. This looks like an original part. See how loose it is on there though? That's not good. Doesn't really matter because it's free play, but yeah. Alright, so that's where we're running all these parts. So we gotta get a hold of the customer on all those issues. The other problem we got is when I'm scraping this thing off over here. I noticed that we got a lot of wear issues on this gear. So you can see where somebody's in here grinding on it already. Hmm. But you can see how the shifter roller is digging it real heavy right here. And that makes it really hard to shoot. how rusty these are. Mm -hmm. So let's go on here. They fit relatively tight on here. Okay, now this is low gear side, which is the big one. Not sure why there's so much wear on that. You can see the wear. Mm -hmm. This rides in here like this. Hmm. But what I don't see is I don't see a lot of wear on this piece here, showing evidence of being a problem. Now this is the late drum, which is not correct for this U bike. Went to this stuff in the mid-70s and started using these gears. These are casted piece of crap. They're soft material. 
the original ones were uh, heat treated steel, so they didn't hardly wear at all. So these are cheap, piece of crap. So it looks to me like this heat treated bushing here is eating up this gear quite a bit, just from probably normal use. Mm -hmm. It's just it's getting a little bit of, you know, because there's no wear on this thing, but you can see. You can definitely see it on this. Yep. So we might have to go in here and do some grinding across here and knock these high spots down. I'm not sure. You can see how you're getting a lot of wear in here too. Now these you want to make sure you got sharp edges on them. You know, these get flattened out through here. All these sharp edges. So what you do is you put your rollers in there if they're really, really loose side to side, you know you got a lot of clearance. So if you want to know how much clearance you're supposed to have, you go over to an area where there's no wear and you see how much clearance you got here. You see how it's pretty fairly mm, nice. tight. Then you go over here where all the wear is. Yeah. And you look for something that's got an extreme amount of clearance in it. So this is not extreme, it's just loose. Mm. So this one's not too bad. A little bit heavier over here, but still usable. That's just you lose shifting action when that gets worn. So, but either way, this has uh, definitely got a lot of wear on the top of this. And obviously, it was an issue because someone was in there grinding on this thing. So we're gonna have to make sure that's not a problem when I put the tranny back together. If it is, I'm gonna have to cut this stuff down a little bit. So I might just go ahead and pre-cut it a little bit and even it up. So probably what I'll do just to make sure. Nothing worse than trying to put something together and getting headaches when you're doing it. Now we gotta take this apart. Right off the bat I see there's no screw right here. Take six bolts of all the other screws. So they left out a couple. <coughs> I guess they weren't needed after all. Yeah. Roll that tight. See how stripped out that is? Mm -hmm. It's probably why they didn't tighten it very much. <laughs> Even come up with some new ones. See, make sure the hole's round. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty round, so that's good. Okay, missing one. Sure the allen goes all the way in there before you start rounding it off. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Sometimes you gotta clean the dirt out of the holes. That helps too. And a lot of times you go in here you find broken springs and stuff like that. You never know. That's why you get in the habit of just taking them apart so you know.
spring in there, mm -hmm. spring there, two springs under there. Oh. They chase after you too. So if you don't want to lose them. Yeah. Oh, they didn't go chasing after me. Yeah, nice. There we go. The springs aren't permanently bent like that, so that's a good sign. That means they're probably still good. And these are still good. So it's actually got good springs on it. <laughs> Surprising. Yeah. Is it bent to war? You gotta make sure these are not binding inside of here. You got left and right. There's a keyway on the one side. There's a pin down in there if you look down in there. Mm -hmm. Goes through right here. So this one here is this one. Nope. Upside down. Flat goes down. And the angle goes like this for the plunger to work. Okay, it doesn't appear to be binding, so that's a good sign. Good too. That all appears to be good condition. Now this gets timed by the screw right here. You line up this mark over here. Mm. See how it looks like it's lined up right now? Mm -hmm. Maybe they had it timed right. A little, little flat right there is supposed to line up with that. Mm. You're supposed to put it in third gear. It doesn't matter. Second, third, they both work. It's in second right now. That's third. Should still be lined up. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that appears to be good. So you can either leave this alone or you take it apart and put a new gas in the back side. Makes sense. Right. We're in here anyway, so we'll put a gasket in it. Sometimes these screws aren't very tight. This one wasn't too bad. Still take a lot of crap on the threads, though. I doubt if it was locked right either. No, not that. It's supposed to be a flat washer under there. So they didn't have any lock washer on there either. Hmm. And no gasket. Ah, oh, there it is. Might be a little hard and old. Could be a little crusty. Mm -hmm. These apart it's a little bit harder. I have to pull this up. Set screw right here that holds it. Hmm. That's how you change out that if some way. Yep. Didn't you say they had a replacement for that? Buy everything in here if you want. Hmm. How much money you want to spend? Yeah. And this whole damn train is all rested to hell. You know, do you think that neutral switch works? It's obviously going to beat on pretty heavy right there for some reason. And we don't know what's wrong with these things. This lock tab right here. This here is put your spring tension right here hmm. for your indent. <clears throat> so to get this out, it makes it easier if you don't have to fight the end end. You don't have to take that out, but it doesn't hurt to do. It's a little easier.
sharp. See all it's doing is folding it back. <laughs> Appears that one's a little dulled out now. Custom. Mm -hmm. Chisels are used. <laughs> that looks worse. Uh, can't be worse. It's a snap-on. Yeah. Yeah. It pretty much just mashed it away. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll work. This Easy out. It's an impact tool. <laughs> Everybody's going to pick on me now for beating on my tools. <laughs> See how long my, my steel bench is on? <laughs> they picked me on for that too. I don't think I'm going to do a for the parts. <laughs> Sure it is. It'll make it look like this, right? Right, yeah, right. <laughs> Dream on. Yeah, look at all those nasty gouges I put in there. Oh, yeah. Terrible. Uh, that was the easy part. I'm going to try to get this out of here. Oh, that's too easy. Oh, look at that. That was way too easy. Somebody must have had this apart. Yeah, that was way too easy. Look really at O ring was doing much. Mm -hmm. At least have a cutaway on one side, you gotta find it and lift it out. It's probably on the bottom because I can't see it. Didn't have a cutaway. Hmm. I wonder it didn't want to come out. Yeah, a lot of them they got cut out so they slip out. Hmm. All right. Oh, look at that, more silicone. That's good for the training, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I thought so. Still free, so we'll leave that in there. A little extra rust never hurt anybody. Yeah. Pin looks good, so no reason to take that apart. These don't really have seals on these things, so because all this is in, supposed to be all encapsulated inside the housing where it's not supposed to leak. Hmm. All right, so that one's done on that. So now we got this piece of crap out. <laughs> Now let's go see how this thing's really made. So I'm going to put this in our lathe, hold it over here, and center it off of this and turn it. Assuming I can hold this round. If I can't hold this round, I got other ways of doing it. Probably. Like for you, like for you. Yeah, we tried holding that one time on that dip distributor, remember? Silicone down on there. Yeah, if you put bearings in there, it'll probably center up too. We'll see how close it is. There's always more than one way of doing this stuff. Six jaw chuck, so I hold a lot more areas. That's one reason why I got that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's round or not. 
look wobbly to me. That deer is so screwed up in there, it's hard to tell. Gear teeth, mm -hmm. they're going like this, mm. like it's that. <laughs> See? Yeah. So they're going up and down. This isn't, that is. Huh. <laughs> quality stuff there. <laughs> so we have a typical quality piece. Otherwise known as a piece of crap. We might see there's other ways of doing this. So we're gonna dead center drive this thing. That's why it looks so blunt. 45 degrees. It's not that number either. Ooh, an angle that was cut out. <laughs> to 40. We'll make it 40. Make it 40. It's back where I had it. <laughs> okay, now you can cut backwards, but you have to turn the chuck backwards. It was 45. Yeah, it looks like it's 45. 45. Try enough times to get the right number. Yeah. Just doing it so that thing gets a truer spin. It's a dead center. Okay. That's why they call it a dead center. <laughs> that makes sense. This is a live center, see it turns. kind of facts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm YouTube hacks is trying to harass me. That's what it is. Do with my phone number. 
Okay, so now this is dead nuts on because we just cut it. I just fix this thing too. Okay, now, assuming this is halfway square, this is halfway square, this will now be square. Mm -hmm. See, that's free to rotate until you get pressure on it. When you put pressure on it, it'll drive it. I can't cut much because I don't have a dog over here. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I loosen this up so it'll spin freely. Look at those gear keys. Mm -hmm. Wow. Nice and straight, huh? Yeah. Hello. That's not a very good part. It's not good. Yeah. All right, we'll be back. Okay, here's this gear right here. So you can see how this whole thing looks like it's bent. So when I said it was wobbling around in my chuck. So it's coming off your center point right now. You can see how it's wobbling. And that could be why we're having issues with this. Where's the high spot at? It's actually high on the back side. On the back side. I can tell if that's wobbling too much. That's not very round back there either. So these things are not very high quality pieces as you can tell. <laughs> so, this is definitely not the best of condition. I'm not sure if you can even straighten these things. I imagine it's if it's steel, you can bend it. If it's if it's made out of cast iron, it's gonna it'll just snap off. I don't know how you would ever bend one of these things unless you hit it while it was out of the bike or something. So, you know. All right, so we're gonna look to see if if this uh, parts are always like this or if it's this particular parts piece of crap. <coughs> so. Here's an FX one I have. See, I told you one had to cut away on the bottom. Mm -hmm. This is an FX. Yeah, it's marked FX. Yep. FXs also have a 74 right here. Hmm. The casting days. They're all that way. You gotta see how this one spins, huh? Yeah. Piers are not supposed to be piles of crap as much as that. So, see how yeah. it's pretty straight? Yeah, that one looks pretty. It's not perfect, but it's pretty straight. Okay, so now we know for a fact that this thing has got issues. So the next problem is, is we want to see, is this thing way out of whack? You see that lines up over here, just about perfect, see? Mm -hmm. And see there's very little clearance in that shaft. See it's got almost no clearance? Mm -hmm. So there's no damn way this, this thing was bent. This was factory made this fucked up. <laughs> it came that way. It came that way. Because <laughs> if this shaft here was going at an angle like that, and it was really loose in here, and I could still put it through here, yeah. I would say it was bent. Right. But that's a tight squeeze, and it lines up perfectly with that other hole. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no damn way that thing is bent. Yeah. That is strictly how it was made. This thing was a pile of crap from day one didn't get any better nope so this is bad now this is going to cause a lot of misalignment and gears and stuff now you could probably take this and machine it and get the get it rounded up a little bit like I was going to do anyway and I want to see if this thing is going to be high over here it's got some other issue Yeah, we hit right there. Mm -hmm. See, we have clearance all through here. Nice, nice. It hits right there. Oops. It's pretty hard right there. So we got. 15 or 20 thou. Oh, she got more than I. Put my fingernail in there, so that's 30 thou. Yeah. 
So that's why this was hitting over here like this. It's because it's way off center. And it's hitting like that. Not too bad. This. Boom. <laughs> See, they ground that all the way right there. So that has clearance. And it hits right here. So this here goes whoop, goes up like that, and falls through here. So what I can do is I can take this and machine it and clean this surface up here and get this where it's least, let me see these high spots. Right. It's still going to wobble all over the place, which is going to affect how the shifting works because obviously it's not following the correct path when it's wobbling back and forth. Right. So. That's going to make it harder. Yeah, well it's just it's all over the place. I mean, it's hard to see how much this is actually going up and down over here. But. No, I can see it. So I'm gonna have to get a hold of the customer, see what they say about this piece, because these aren't cheap. These are these are like 200 bucks, maybe more. Let's just see. But Mario, we just took one out of his, because he wants FX. So I think we have a brand new one hmm. that we might have available to sell him. So so we got more issues with this tranny than what we started with. So what a shocker. Yeah. So we got to deal with this. We got to deal with some stripped out holes in the case over there. A bad uh, starter, or I mean, um, throttle bearing's bad, and then the um, the case race has got some pitting, and high gear's got some minor stuff. But so we'll see what the customer wants to do. We're adding up quite a bit on this tranny, so we got to see it uh, what he wants me to do. Like I said, I can machine this and reuse and put it back in. It's not the best in all, you know, to be using something like this. But it was working before, it'll work again. We'll just make it so it doesn't bind up, so at least it'll work better. You know, this stuff doesn't have to be perfect, and if you're not going to drive it for 50,000 miles, you only want to go 10,000 miles, yeah, you can use lower quality parts, it'll work. So, all right, we'll see what this one does.